full reality. We just developed complicated uh, mathematical models, but they don't show everything. One of these models is quantum mechanical models of atoms. It is based on Bohr atomic planetary model. The, this model has problems from beginning of his establishment that they are not solved. And this model, because it is so wide accepted, everybody, when you get about the atoms, they he imagined these models. But there is not, this model is just a ma mathematical, it is not a real physical model. Uh, it is known that uh, Maxwell built his famous uh, details on electric and magnetic, magnetism on the assumption of the existence of material ether. In 1920, when Einstein developed general relativity, he realized that he needs ether in order to, to explain the, the space curvature. So in his book, he realized that uh, without ether, uh, the general relativity theory, theory is unthinkable. But at the same time, he rejects the, the assumption of material ether uh, favored by Maxwell. Why? Because in this case, the, the equation E equal m c square could not work because the ether could not be annihilated. This has a big repercussion in the, our vision of the universe of the cosmology, of the Big Bang, the Big Bang, uh, from this, even from this assumption, the Big Bang appeared is not uh, valid because in this case there is, not a re, there is not a pure energy separated by the matter. And even the Einstein equation E equal to mc square, m is not equal to matter. That is accepted not in the mainstream science, but it is <laughs> when you start from the ether concept and from the model that I developed, I, I uh, see that this uh, mass, mass depends on the uh, state of the physical vacuum. In the same, in some cases, it could be uh, changed. So, uh, in uh, shortly, the framework of the basic structure of matter, in the very bottom level that I associate with the Planck scale, that is extremely in the microcosmos, we need just two particles that are spherical, but with a ratio of 2 to 3 in their diameter, and one universal law I call supergravitation, because it is distinguished by the Newtonian law that he, the force is uh, inverse proportional to the cube of distance. This means, this means that in very close distances in microcosmos, the force is uh, extremely large. And uh, by these particles, by pure geometrical configurations, I don't show here because I show in other talks, but here, I don't have time for this. By this configuration, I built three-dimensional structures like uh, fractal structures. And at some point, these fractal structures become like a prism, extended objects with internal twisted structures. And this, they preserve that they are just only two. On one is right side twisting, another is left side twisting. And this, <coughs> I may call sub-elementary particles, in fact, appear that they could build a cosmic uh, structure I call cosmic lattice that has all the property of the physical vacuum, including uh, propagation of uh, velocity of light with the known velocity, and also propagation of Newtonian gravity. But Newtonian gravity that is inverse proportional to the square distance becomes different than the supergravity because it is 
propagated by this structure. And uh, this structure, in fact, it, it has like a dim diamond arrangement. Here is the individual, uh, I call this structure cosmic lattice. Individual nodes, this is from the four prism, one, two, three, four. But they are held by this supergravitational forces, so they are flexible. When investigated, their uh, dynamics, they have two, uh, two axes of symmetry. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> One axis along this uh, uh, prism, I call, and other axis uh, X, Y, Z, that's uh, orthogonal. And if you arrange this uh, uh, cosmic lattice knots together, in fact, you, you see how the, uh, the propagations of two kinds of forces. One kind of forces is supergravitational forces propagated by this axis. Other forces are electromagnetic propagated by uh, this axis. And why? When it's, it's investigating the uh, oscillations along two axes, it is simply just deviating from the central point. We see along the uh, orthogonal axis, it is in this. Along on the, this axis, it is this. We have two dips here, one dip. So a result, as a result of this, it makes a complex oscillations, I call spatial precession momentum, that when starting from this point, make this curve, go to the point B, that is not consigned with A. But after many oscillations, it closes something like I call quasi-sphere with uh, six bumps and six dimples. And this quasi-sphere then become, when they are arranged in the cosmic lattice, it defines the magnetic line. But when it is elongated, it appears when there is electrical fit, it becomes elongated. It, it, it becomes a portion of electrical lines. Uh, this uh, supplementary particles that I call twisted prisms is located in the initial phase of the galaxy development, they combined in more complex structure I call helical structures. You see here, here from the two particles. And there with ratio two to three, so they enter each other. I call first order, this is the second order, could be also third order. And this structure appears to be <coughs> the structure of the electron. It is the smallest stable particle 